Hello everyone, I am Tanvi Kaur and I welcome you to this series called RBI 247. In this very series, we pick up some important financial topics and we try to discuss them with the help of different questions. So in today's session, we will be picking up some finance currents and our focus will be on understanding some new concepts out of them. So before beginning, before moving on to question number one, for all those who are watching this video for the very first time, you can subscribe to our channel and press this bell icon for all latest updates and notifications. You can also join our telegram group. In this very group, we share some free quizzes, the updates for all our latest videos and you can also post your queries over here. So let's not waste any time and just move on to question number one. The question says that RBI has reviewed and revised the existing guidelines on appointment of scheduled private sector banks as the agency banks of RBI for conduct of the government business. So which of the following statements correctly relates to these guidelines? So what they are talking about? They are talking about the guidelines which RBI has recently come up with, which relates to your private sector banks acting as the agency banks of RBI. So let's first look at these guidelines and then we'll move back to the question, read these statements and try to answer this question. So if I talk about RBI and the agency banking concept, there are certain banks which RBI permits to act on its behalf to perform certain functions. That bank is an agency bank. So if I talk about any agency entity, it is a it can be a firm which provides, which is authorized to provide certain services on an entity's behalf. So here, because it's agency bank, hai, to agency bank is the bank hai, which has been authorized by RBI to act for that bank, to act for RBI to perform certain functions. So, Jin banks ko RBI ne yaha pe permission de rakhi hai ki wo kuch businesses perform kar sakte hai RBI ke behalf mein. They are the agent banks of RBI because they are acting as RBI's agent in performing certain functions. They have been authorized by RBI to do so. So, in this case, what happened is that the private sector banks, they were allowed to act as the agency banks of RBI. So, being an agency bank, they were allowed to carry out certain government businesses. Now, RBI kai services provide karta hai government businesses ko. Okay. So, private sector banks ko RBI ne authorize kiya tha ki wo agency banks si tera act karke government ke wo businesses perform karne mein RBI ki help karenge. So, there were certain private sector banks which were authorized by RBI to perform, to act as an agent bank and perform certain services or certain functions for the government businesses. But that was allowed prior to 2012. So, 2012 mein kya hua ki government ek embargo laga diya gaya tha and embargo which is basically a ban was imposed that the private sector banks will not be authorized to act as an agent bank and they will not be allowed to provide the services to different government businesses. So, this ban was imposed in 2012 but recently in the month of Feb this year this ban has been removed. So now because this bank ha this ban has been removed, this embargo has been removed. So the private sector banks which were given the authorization prior to 2012 to carry out the agency jobs, they will further be allowed to carry out those jobs for your central governments, for your state governments and for providing those jobs, no fresh approval will be needed. So, Jin banks ko yi authorization tha ki wo, Jin private banks ko yi authorization tha ki wo agency banks ki tarah act kar sakte hai and they can provide the services to the central government, to the state governments. So, un banks ko further naya approval lene ki zarwat nahi hai because they already have the approval, they can function as the agency banks. Further, if I talk about these existing private sector banks, so the private sector banks which are already existing, who are having the permission or who are having, who are already having the agreement with RBI that yes, they can act as agency banks. So they can further continue to provide these services like that of an agency bank to the central government, to the state government. And for providing this service, they don't need a new approval. Only fresh approval ki zarwat nahi hai because they were already having the approval. So this is the very first guideline. Now, they, these banks must have got the approval to act as an agency bank. In entities ko agency bank, in private sector banks ko agency banks ki tarah work karna allowed tha. They had 
the approvals but they had the approvals to provide certain services kuch services provide karne ka unke paas approval tha but not all services so if these banks who are already having the approval of rbi to work as an agency bank but if they want to provide some additional service some additional government agency business unko karna hai jiska approval nahi hai to us रिस्पेक्ट में उस सर्विस के रिस्पेक्ट पे उन्हें फ्रेश अप्रूवल आरबीआई से लेना पड़ेगा सो दे वर ऑलरेडी हैविंग द अप्रूवल ऑफ सर्टेन सर्विसेज और ऑफ सर्टेन बिजनेसेस फॉर दैट दे डोंट नीड अ फ्रेश अप्रूवल बट अदर देन दैट इफ दे वांट टू डू सम एडिशनल सर्विस फॉर द गवर्नमेंट देन विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दैट दे नीड एन अप्रूवल नाउ द क्वेश्चन कम्स दैट फ्रॉम वेयर कैन दे टेक दैट अप्रूवल अप्रूवल कहाँ से लिया जाए सो फॉर दैट देर आर सर्टन डिपार्टमेंट्स विच हैव बीन गिवन द टास्क ऑफ गिविंग द अप्रूवल्स सो इफ द अप्रूवल इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू प्रोवाइडिंग सम सर्विस टू देंट्रल गवर्नमेंट देन देर इज एन ऑफिस ऑफ कंट्रोलर जनरल ऑफ अकाउंट्स फ्रॉम वेयर यू नीड द अप्रूवल एंड इफ द सर्विस इज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू अ स्टेट गवर्नमेंट बिजनेस देन देर इज अ फाइनेंस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट फ्रॉम वेयर यू नीड टू टेक द अप्रूवल other than this you also need to obtain the approval from the department of government and bank account so this is another department iske central office se bhi aapko approval lena padega so this was about those banks those private banks who were already having some agreement with rbi to act as an agency bank there might be some private sector banks which don't have any approvals who are not having any agency banking agreement with rbi so what about those banks those banks if want to take the agency business work they can get the approval from rbi and they can function as a agency bank okay they can handle the government agency business but for that they need to enter into an agreement with rbi now the thing comes up that which banks will be allowed with this agreement uh, to act as an agency bank so jo banks rbi se agency banking agreement ka approval lena chahte hain those banks should be healthy banks and they should not be covered under the prompt corrective action framework we have already discussed the concept of prompt corrective action the pca framework in one of the sessions so you can uh, just search for this session on youtube and you will get the session prompt corrective action framework was a framework where certain thresholds were said that okay banks are not maintaining this much capital if bank assets are not of this quality then beforehand only rbi should take some action so that the problem doesn't deteriorate even further so pehle hi un banks ke against action le liya jaye jab wo thresholds cross karte hain kuch parameters ki taki wo unki functioning or deteriorate na ho so that was the pca framework so the if there is any private sector bank who wants to take the agency banking business but they are under the pca framework then they will not be given the approval as of now if i talk there is no private sector bank which is under this framework so all private sector banks if they want to pro- get the agency banking agreement approval then they can go to rbi for that so these were the guidelines which rbi has recently come up with now if i move back to the question and read these statements and identify the correct ones the first one says that the existing private sector banks with whom rbi already has the agency banking agreement and who are authorized to do the agency business require fresh approval from rbi no they don't need any fresh approval so this statement is incorrect the second one says that the scheduled private sector banks not having agency banking agreement with rbi but they intend to take the government agency business may be appointed as agents once they get an execution of an agreement with rbi so this statement is absolutely correct we just just discussed it the last one says that the bank seeking fresh approval from rbi should be healthy and not under pca framework this statement is again correct so the second and third statement are correct thus the answer is option d so now let's move on to question number 2 This is the second question it is again related to RBI notification so let us read this question as well RBI has made amendments to directions on KYC to further leverage the dash process and to simplify and rationalize the process of periodic updation of KYC now this process which they are talking about this process is the process uh, which is a alternative method through which we can identify the customer with facial recognition we can exercise customer due diligence 
by authorized official of regulated entities how that can be done that can be done by undertaking seamless secure live informed consent based audio visual interaction with the customer so what is happening over here rbi has come up with a process which can help with the kyc thing so this process which they are asking you that what is the process that process will be will involve the audio visual interaction with the customer customer ke sath aap audio visual video conferencing type of process ke through interact karoge and using that process you will fetch the identification details of the customers that process will be live it will be secure and it will help in the customer due diligence so what is that process called this process has been uh, provided this the details about this process have been provided in detail in the kyc guidelines which rbi has recently amended so we will discuss these kyc guidelines as of now the answer to this question is option a vcip so what is this vcip what are these kyc guidelines let us understand this so if i talk about this vcip it is the video based customer identification process so from the very name it's clear that we are trying to fetch the customers details their identification details using a video audio visual and audio communication with the customer so let's first study about kyc what is kyc which has necessitated the need of having a video based customer identification process if i talk about kyc kyc stands for know your customer or know your client now it's very important that if the bank is undertaking business with any client it can be me it can be you or it can be any other person they should know us very well wo hamare sath business karne ja rahe hain hamare ko kuch services provide karne wale hain so it's very important that they have information about us they are aware about who we are so if we try to open a bank account or if we try to take any service from the bank we need to attach our aadhar card or we need to fill different forms where we provide our details our basic details our name our age our phone number our address and they might also ask some questions based on which they can assess our risk ability so that is know your customer it's very important for the bank to know us well now why it's important that they have identification details about us it is because if we are taking services from the bank bank must make it uh, make must be assured that we would not be involved in any wrong practice we will not misuse the services of bank in case we indulge in any fraudulent activity if we misuse then they have our details and they can take action against us so it's very important that the banks have details about us not only banks even if we go to any investment advisor we want to invest in some company they will fetch our details wo humse hamari basic details legi firm hamari ko kuch questions puchegi jiske basis pe they can assess our risk taking ability so based on this jo investment advisor hoga jo bhi information unhe hamare bare mein humse mili uske basis pe hi wo hame products ya services provide karega taki hamari risk taking ability ke hisab se hame products mile if they are providing us a loan say worth rupees 10 lakh and our ability is to pay just rupees 2 lakh then obviously it's not at all a good deal for the bank so it's very important for the bank or any other entity to know their customers well so that's why this kyc process came into picture now because of this pandemic situation uh, everything is going online there are digital platforms for each and everything these days okay be it if we require to buy a medicines basic groceries we need to make certain payments certain bills all those things are going digital so if i talk about this kyc thing uh, why not make this process also digital so kyc rules have been amended and they have allowed rbi has allowed that the banks can undertake this kyc process through video based customer identification process so customer ki identification video calling ke through ho sakegi and uh, all so all this can help in the pro process simplifying the process of kyc and the updation of the process of kyc so what amendments have rbi suggested first of all they have amended the definition of vcip so what the rbi says that this video based customer identification process is a alternative method which will help in the customer identification wo hamare ko customers ki basic details dega it will help to get us the customer details which will help us to identify the customers how that will be done through facial recognition 
वीडियो बेस्ड कम्युनिकेशन होगा कस्टमर के साथ इट विल हेल्प इन दी कस्टमर ड्यू डिलीजेंस वॉट इज दिस कस्टमर ड्यू डिलीजेंस Customer due diligence means that we need to assess the customer's background and their identity and the level of risk they possess. हमें customer के बारे में due diligence होनी चाहिए basic information हमारे पास सारी होनी चाहिए customers के बारे में उनके background के बारे में उनकी identity के बारे में about their level of risk, identity, background so that we can provide them the service. So that is covered under this VCIP process. And this or this uh, video based communication. will take place by which entities by the regulated entities now what are this these re's the regulated entities regulated entities include your banks your nbfcs or other financial institutions which might have been uh, granted the right to go through this kyc process so this process will be more seamless it will be secure live communication should happen and audio visual interaction should be there with customer and using this you can obtain the basic identification information about the customer so this is the very first amendment other than this another section 17 has been amended which says that both your deposit and borrowal accounts they can be opened using otp based kyc but if they are opened using that method then uh, they will not be operational if फॉर मोर देन वन ईयर अनलेस एंड अंडर दू ऑप्टेन दी आइडेंटिफिकेशन सो इसका मतलब ये है इट मीन्स दैट अर्लियर दी के वाई सी विच वी गॉट विथ इट वॉज ओ टी पी बेस्ड लाइक यू प्रोवाइडेड सम डिटेल्स यू गॉट दी ओ टी पी यू टोल दैट ओ टी पी एंड योर आइडेंटिफिकेशन डिटेल्स वो रिसीव बाई दी बैंक्स बट नाउ दिस प्रोसेस हैज टू बी फॉलोड योर के वाई सी इज नीड टू बी अपडेटेड योर आइडेंटिफिकेशन डिटेल्स नीड टू बी अपडेटेड एंड इफ यू आर नॉट अपडेटिंग दैम विद इन अ स्पैन ऑफ वन ईयर योर अकाउंट्स वोट बी फंक्शनल अदर देन दैट आर बी आई हैज ऑल्सो अमेंडेड सेक्शन एटीन विथ सेज दैट दी रेगुलेटेड एंटिटीज योर बैंक योर एन बी एफ सीज दे शुड कैरी आउट दिस वीडियो कस्टमर आइडेंटिफिकेशन प्रोसेस वाई they will carry out this process so that they can get the customer due diligence for different kinds of customers jaise ki aap individual customers jo naye customers aa rahe hain unka basic identification details le sako talking about the proprietorship firm there you need to obtain the details about the proprietor then if i talk about the legal entities there you need to obtain the details of the authorized signatories of your beneficial owners moreover earlier the uh, KYCs which were obtained using Aadhaar OTP, those need to be converted into a face-to-face -face mode. पहले face-to-face नहीं होता था. आपको OTP आता था, Aadhaar linking होती थी, and using that the approval were given. But now the there is a need to convert from though that non-face-to-face mode to a face-to-face -face mode. And also the KYCs which were already approved for the eligible customers, they need to be updated. So periodic updation hona hai customer ki details ka. So this was about the amendments which have been made. Now to support this video customer identification process, certain minimum standards have been prescribed which these regulated entities need to meet. So let us look at those standards as well. first standard is related to the infrastructure the infrastructure of the entire process should be supportive of this video based customer identification so infrastructure proper hona chahiye jo aapke ye video communication ko acche se support kare so what should be there with respect to infrastructure we should comply by the rbi we means the regulated entities need to comply by the guidelines which rbi has prescribed with respect to maintaining the cyber security now there are high risks of cyber crime when we are using the online platforms so these entities if are using any infrastructure for video based communication then cyber security must be maintained other than that whatever whatever technology infrastructure these entities are using that technology infrastructure should be there in the own premises of that entity it should be housed in an own network domain us regulated entity ke paas apna network domain hona chahiye apna infrastructure hona chahiye jiske through wo video based communication karenge 
अदर देन दैट दी एंटिटीज शुड डू दी इंक्रिप्शन ऑफ डेटा इंक्रिप्शन क्या होता है वॉट्स इंक्रिप्शन इंक्रिप्शन इज कन्वर्टिंग इन टू कोड्स सो वट एवर इन्फॉर्मेशन इज बीन कम्युनिकेटेड इट इज कन्वर्टेड इन टू कोड सो दैट एनी अदर पर्सन हु इज नॉट ऑथराइज टू यूज दैट इन्फॉर्मेशन शुड नॉट यूज इट ओके जिसके पास ऑथराइजेशन नहीं है वो यूज नहीं कर पाएगा उसको ऐसे पासवर्ड्स में या ऐसे कोडिंग में कन्वर्ट करो सो द रेगुलेटेड एंटिटी नीड्स टू इंक्रिप्ट द डेटा सो दैट ओनली दी ऑथराइज बॉडीज यूज दैट other than that the regulated entities also need to make sure that whatever communication is happening through whichever infrastructure method whichever application that should prevent the sharing of the information with the ip addresses which don't belong to india or if there are any spoofed ip addresses so koi bhi information share nahi honi chahiye आउटसाइड इंडिया के आई पी एड्रेसेस के साथ या स्पूफ्ड आई पी एड्रेसेस के साथ स्पूफ्ड मीन्स दी इमिटेटिंग वंस द जो नकली आई पी एड्रेसेस बना रखे हैं उसके साथ ये इंफॉर्मेशन शेयर नहीं होनी चाहिए अदर देन दैट द वीडियो रिकॉर्डिंग शुड बी एबल टू टैप दी लाइव जी पी एस ऑफ द कस्टमर्स द क्वालिटी ऑफ वीडियो शुड बी गुड सो दैट यू कैन प्रॉपरली फैच द आइडेंटिफिकेशन डिटेल्स ऑफ द कस्टमर्स मोर ओवर वॉट एवर एप्लीकेशन सॉफ्टवेयर और वेब सर्विसेज यू आर यूजिंग फॉर वीडियो कम्युनिकेशन दो शुड बी टेस्टेड आपको मेक श्योर sure करना है कि वो एप्लीकेशन प्रॉपरली फंक्शन कर रहा है इट्स फंक्शनिंग प्रॉपरली इट इज मेंटेनिंग दी स्टैंडर्ड विच शुड बी मेट एंड टाइम टू टाइम यू नीड टू मेंटेन दैट सॉफ्टवेयर सो दैट इट इज हेल्पिंग आउट इन दी प्रोसेस फॉर विच इट वॉज एक्चुअली सेटअप सो दिस वॉज विद रिस्पेक्ट टू दी इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर Now, if I talk about the procedure for this video customer identification process, first of all, the regulated entities should have the trained people who can properly undertake this process. They should have the ability that if there is any fraudulent activity which is taking place, they can detect it in no time. So they should be able to check and detect any fraud or manipulative activity or suspicious activity if the customer is carrying it out. Other than that, if there is any kind of disruption in the communication process, then that session needs to be aborted, and after aborting that session, a new session needs to be initiated. Moreover, whatever audio-visual communication is happening, it shall be recorded. There are different processes through which you can capture the basic information of the customer. Customer के साथ आप interact कर रहे हो audio visually. उसके साथ साथ आपको उसके आधार कार्ड की details चाहिए pan card की details चाहिए So you can obtain the आधार card details, the pan card details using audio visual communication along with one of the following methods. So the customer will get an OTP and uh, based on the e KYC आधार linking, the details can be fetched by the regulated entities. then you can go for offline verification of their aadhar cards you can go for kyc records so central kyc registry mein jo kyc records hote hain you can fetch the customer details from there you can fetch the customer details from digi locker so these are different methods which can be used under this video customer identification process other than that you need to record the data so in different systems this recordings can be stored the recordings should be stored in a timely manner jisme date time all these things should be properly specified other than that you also need to periodically update kyc ek bar aapne customer ki identification details deni once you have fetched the details the customer might change the addresses the phone number or any other thing so time to time kycs need to be updated if the customers are more risky rbi would specify the criteria okay this one is more riskier this is less riskier accordingly times have been specified okay that if you are under this risk level then in the shorter span of time you need to update your kyc agar aap itna risk इतनी मेजर इस कैटेगरी में नहीं आते हो तो आपको थोड़ा ज्यादा टाइम दे दिया जाएगा टू अपडेट योर केवाईसी बट अपडेशन ऑफ केवाईसी इज आल्सो वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो दिस वाज द होल कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ द वीडियो कस्टमर आइडेंटिफिकेशन प्रोसेस व्हिच इज समथिंग व्हिच हैज बीन अमेंडेड अंडर योर केवाईसी गाइडलाइंस नाउ इफ आई मूव बैक टू द क्वेश्चन वी हैव ऑलरेडी आंसर्ड दैट वर्चुअल कस्टमर आइडेंटिफिकेशन प्रोसेस इज द आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन नाउ लेट्स मूव ऑन टू क्वेश्चन नंबर 3 So this is the third question, which says, "What does it refer to?" So here we have two statements, and we have to identify what is this "it" in these statements. So the first one says, "It is the proposed bad bank for taking over stressed assets of lenders." Second one says that Padma Kumar M Nair, the Chief General Manager of the Stressed Assets Resolution Group at 
SBI will be the CEO who will head it, who will head this proposed bad bank. So, what is the name of this bad bank which they are talking about? The answer to this question is option C. N A R C L. N A R C L stands for the National Asset Reconstruction Company. N A R C L. So, let us see what is this NARCL and what's the latest news about it. So recently it was there in newspapers that Padma Kumar M. Nair has been appointed as the CEO of this company. Okay, he has the experience in uh, the reconstruction part or dealing with the stressed assets because he was dealing with the stressed assets of SBI and because of this experience which he had he has been appointed as the ceo of narcl he has a long term exposure of handling the stressed assets to aapke npas ki problem hoti hai okay that is the concept of stressed assets so he has been appointed as the ceo now let us discuss a bit about this company national asset reconstruction company limited narcl if you remember in the recent budget our finance minister Nirmala Sitaraman ji uh, announced that we'll have a bad bank, we'll have a asset reconstruction company which will take over the stress assets of these banks. Banks ki NPA problem kaafi bad rahi thi, especially after COVID. So finance minister came up with a solution ki that we'll have a bad bank. What is a bad bank? A bad bank refers to a financial institution which will take these bad assets, these NPAs, these stress assets of your lenders and it will help in the resolution process. So the, this bad bank will be carrying out the function of both asset reconstruction and asset management. So if I talk about these concepts, it will take the NPAs of the banks or the lenders. It will, uh, what it will do, it might provide some moratorium, it might delay the interest payments, change the interest rates. So loan ko restructure karenge, uh, they will restructure the loan so that it is easy to recover the loan. And if, if that's not possible, then those loans uh, will be better managed by some firm who asset reconstruction company who loans ko kharid legi it will run that business and uh, to make sure that they are better able to manage those firms and fetch out some amount from that or they might sell it to some other investors so those loans need to be dealt with in a more better manner that's why this concept of bad bank was suggested so now that entity is coming into picture jo bad bank ka suggestion diya gaya tha wo ab picture mein aa raha hai and that bad bank has been named as the national asset reconstruction company limited so both public and private sector banks in collaboration will run this bad bank and it will do what it will deal it will uh, the assets will be dealt by these companies they will be better managed or agar wo manage nahi kar payenge then this, these assets will be disposed of to some alternate investment funds now what are these alternate investment funds i will be discussing in next question so alag alag type ke investors ko ye assets fir sell kar diye jayenge agar inhe manage na kiya ja pa raha hoga to so this is the NSRCL concept and recently this person has been appointed as its CEO. So you, your objective should not be just to understand that who has been appointed the CEO of this company but you should be aware that what is this company, how this concept of this company came into picture, why this company is being set up. All right. So try to find out the concepts out of news and understand it. Aise hi aapko newspaper padhna hai. Se facts padke aapko newspaper nahi chhodna. After reading the facts, if there are some important terms which are coming up, you need to understand the meaning. Conceptual clarity is very important for the exams. Okay. Now let's move on to the last question. Before moving on to the last question, one more thing. This NSERCL, it will take up the loans of or the stress assets of the banks and the lenders and in return, in return it will pay 15% to them in cash and 85% will be paid in the form of security receipts. Security receipts are nothing but the security. Aapko kuch securities issue kar di jayengi which will provide you the, which is a, uh, which will act as an evidence that you are the holder of some asset, you have a title, a right over some asset. So pura cash nahi diya jata, kuch securities bhi issue ki jati hai. So this is the concept of NARCL. Now let's move on to the last question. The question says that SEBI has come up with alternative investment funds, second amendment regulations 2021. 
these regulations are likely to impact the private equity and the venture capital funds that are registered under alternative investment funds 1 and 2 categories and hedge funds which are registered under category 3 in india so which of the following options correctly states these regulations if i talk about this sebi has recently amended the regulations of alternative investment funds according to these amendments these alternative investment funds they are allowed to invest certain portion only some percentage of the funds can be invested in companies so what is the threshold is has been provided let's first discuss these regulations and then we'll move back to the question so sebi has framed certain rules for these alternative investment funds according to these rules there are certain categories of alternative investment funds we have category 1 category 2 and category 3 so in category of alternate investment funds ko kuch limit laga di gayi hai ki kitna wo apna fund invest kar sakte hain so as far as category 1 and 2 are concerned they can invest not more than 25% of the funds to be invested in any company or uh, investi company either directly or they can invest it in some other alternative investment fund which will further invest in these alternate investment funds okay और सॉरी आप किसी और ऑल्टरनेटिव फंड में भी इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हो जो फर्दर इन इन्वेस्टिंग कंपनीज में फंड इन्वेस्ट करेगा एंड इफ आई टॉक अबाउट कैटेगरी थ्री ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड्स उनके लिए जो थ्रेश होल्ड है दैट इज टेन परसेंट ऑफ द मनी दे कैन इन्वेस्ट सो वॉट इज दिस फंड ऑफ फंड और ऑल्टरनेट एंड ऑल्टरनेटिव इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड कॉन्सेप्ट फंड ऑफ फंड मीन्स अ फंड where the money is pooled and it is used to invest in different assets that can be your hedge fund mutual fund like we collect the money in a mutual fund and in invest it in different assets similarly fund of funds bhi ek fund hai jisme alag alag funds paisa pool kiya jata hai and that is used to invest in different assets like hedge funds mutual funds okay you have more broader diversification under this and minimal risk so the fund of funds Uh, have a backing of the private equity or venture capital funds that can invest 25% up to a quarter of its corpus in the portfolio of company so jo pe paisa raise ho raha hai private equity ke through venture capital funds ke through that will be invest only 25% of that amount can be invested in any portfolio of company so isse pehle kya provision tha earlier the alternative investment funds were not allowed to invest directly in the companies okay they they were only allowed to invest up to a limited extent only as a limited partner so unki co investment ki opportunities itni achhi nahi thi they were not having good co investment opportunities but now sebi has permitted uh, the indian funds of funds that they can directly invest in the companies but the amount have been prescribed as 25% so as for the latest amendments the fund of funds alternative investment funds can invest directly in investment companies with a cap of 25% and 10% for the category 3 funds so what is this alternative investment funds hum bar bar keh rahe hain alternative investment funds ye hote kya hain they are of like we have mutual funds where we pool money and invest here also we pool money and invest but the question is that this money is privately pooled from whom from the sophisticated investors high net worth individuals so high net worth investors jo hote hain jo sophisticated investors hote hain unse paisa collect kiya jata hai and that money is invested as per the sebi guidelines now it is not a conventional asset or a traditional asset like a bond like a stock they are unconventional assets so what kinds of assets are included under this we have the venture capital funds the private equity funds the hedge funds the angel funds so ye type ke jo funds hain they are more risky bahut zyada complex types ke ye investments hain now 25% limit has been prescribed for category 1 and category 2 funds so category 1 funds include your social impact funds your infrastructure funds your venture capital funds category 2 comprises of your real estate funds your private equity or private debt funds and category 3 comprises of long only public market funds or hedge funds so let us discuss about this venture capital funds this private equity funds hedge funds okay some important kinds of funds if i talk about venture capital funds you would have heard the concept of venture capitalists 
venture capitalists are those who invest in the startups in the early stages of the firms who need the funding for growth okay jo initially start karte hain business unhe early stages ke liye paise chahiye to uh, grow to expand so venture capitalists provide that funding so venture capital fund is that fund only which invests in these startups it is really very risky but chances of return are also very high it falls under category 1 of the alternate investment funds second is the angel funds angel funds are a sub category of venture capital funds you would have heard the concept of the angel investors so angel investors wo hote hain jo bahut zyada high net worth individuals hote hain they are high net worth individuals having experience of on uh, of carrying out the entrepreneurship of carrying out the businesses and they as a angel as a business angel invest in your startups okay so the third one is the private equity funds now the basic difference between a venture capital fund and a private equity fund is that private equity fund not only invest in new but also old companies there are companies which are not doing well so private equity funds invest in those companies it takes it buys those companies and it tries to manage them make them run in a more better manner and later when their performance improves it sells those um, those businesses and then makes money so it's a fund which invests in the private companies okay they are registered under category 2 of alternate investment funds then the last one which we will discuss is the hedge fund from the name it suggests we are trying to hedge the risk so it is a pool of money where we a money where the money is collected and it is used to invest in the equities uh, and the, to carry out the arbitrage to invest in bonds currencies in derivatives so alag alag type ke complex products mein ye paisa invest kiya jata hai this money is invested in complex products like the derivatives okay and the basic objective here is to hedge the risks to hedge the risks to investors capital against the market volatility they are they are highly risky and they invest in derivatives take lot of leverage and fall under category 3 तो so, यहाँ पे जो पैसा होता है वो किसका होता है हाई नेटवर्थ इंडिविजुअल्स का तो टिपिकल इन्वेस्टर्स इन दिस फंड्स आर योर हाई नेटवर्थ इंडिविजुअल और आर इंस्टीट्यूशनल इन्वेस्टर्स लाइक म्यूचुअल फंड पेंशन फंड इंश्योरेंस कंपनीज और इट कैन बी द बैंक्स एज वेल ओके सो दे ट्राई टू इन्वेस्ट इन कॉम्प्लेक्स इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स टू जनरेट हाई अमाउंट ऑफ रिटर्न सो दिस वॉज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ऑल्टरनेट इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड एंड वी डिस्कस सम वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट काइंड ऑफ ऑल्टरनेट इन्वेस्टमेंट फंड Now, if I move back to the question, we are thorough with the thresholds that the category one two threshold is twenty five percent, and for category three it's ten percent. So answer is option E. These invest alternate investment funds are not allowed to invest more than twenty five and ten percent in any investing company. All right. So this was all for today's session. I hope you found this session to be useful. With this, I would like to end up this session. Thank you so much.